And now, ladies and gentlemen, live on the zone from the fabulous Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas. We have arrived the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing this for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. Brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Zanford Promotions, Murphy's Boxing, and attorney Thomas J. Henry. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the executive director is Brian Francis. The WBO supervisor in attendance for this bout, Gino Rodriguez. Your three judges scoring at ringside on the 10-point must system, Larry Hazard Jr., John Shorley, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Mark Calloy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. The world is ready. San Antonio, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing you first, fighting out of the blue corner, with his cornerman, Packy Collins, wearing tonight black trunks trimmed in gold. He weighed in officially 159 and one half pounds, and in 33 professional bouts, holds a record of 30 victories, including 21 knockouts, just three defeats. The fighting pride representing all of the Irish around the world from Cork, Ireland. Here is Gary Spy. And across the ring stands his opponent fighting in the red corner. Cornered by former world champion Eric Morales. Tonight he makes his middleweight debut wearing burgundy trunks. He too weighed in officially 159 and one half pounds. And in 34 professional fights, he is perfect. 34 victories, no defeats. 27 wins coming by way of knockout. The former WBO super welterweight champion of the world. De Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Jaime Munguia! Okay, let's clear the ring. I need one chief second. I need one chief second. Let's clear the ring. Okay, Jaime. Gary, yeah, we've already gone over the rules in the dress room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Most importantly, Protect yourselves at all times. Punches here and up are good. Punches right here and up are good. Choca and want this. Touch gloves if you want to. Let's go to work. Well, here we go. Jaime Munguia making his debut at 160 pounds up against Gary Spike O'Sullivan. This fight should be fun. Both these guys only know one way, and that's forward. And round one underway. Jaime Munguia in the maroon trunks. Spike O'Sullivan in the black trunks. Munguia's debut at middleweight. Talked about how much easier it was not dealing with the stress and exhaustion of trying to make 154 pounds. We know we have two big hitters who will stand in front of each other and swing away. Yeah, when you're as young as Mungia is at 23 years old, you can get away with treating your body like that. He was talking about making weight every morning the day of a weigh-in, having to go to the saunas and and work out the day before, and, and he left the fight in the gym. Now, we saw a much comfortable and happy Munguia at the fighter meetings, smiling, saying all the right things, and those six pounds are a big difference in boxing. Sullivan has been training since May, waiting for an opportunity, and finally got it in Munguia. Three losses on the resume of Spike O'Sullivan 
world-class fighters from Billy Joe Saunders, David Lemieux, and Chris Eubank Jr. Good body shot by Munguia. That's going to be the key to this fight, the body shots. Sullivan takes a good shot upstairs, but he has been hurt to the body. Chris Eubanks Jr. hurt him to the body. And then he dug up with uppercuts after that. But like you mentioned, Ryan, he's only lost to the best. Nice combination there from Munguia as he again peppered the body. Munguia got a little low with that body shot. That's fine. Just don't get discouraged. Keep going downstairs to the body. That's going to be the key for Munguia. For Sullivan, it's going to be not letting Munguia get too comfortable being the aggressor and coming forward. You see Sullivan has war across his trunks. That's what he's going to kind of want later in the fight. Right now, stay in the fight with jabs and don't let Munguia get off with the combinations. Spryco Sullivan talking about how he believed Munguia would give him plenty of opportunities. Feeling like there's leaky defense from Munguia. I already see better head movement on Munguia's part. Nice combination there from Munguia, and then a big right hand. McGee, a huge left hand that lands on O'Sullivan to end the first round. That hurt O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan's hurt going back to his corner. Hey, don't come out again. It's that hard, okay? He's going to do that again. You got to let him go with them shots. Let him know. When he comes, it. When he comes, let the shots go. Let him know you got power. Stay in your corner, O'Sullivan. Start of the second round, and you said it, Sergio. O'Sullivan was hurt as he sauntered back to his corner at the end of the first round. Because he was just, he's not getting respect. He's not punching. He's letting Munguia get off with the combinations. He has to get respect. I said he needs to hold off on the war. I think he's going to have to exchange right now, do something, because Munguia is landing some hard shots. And it's not going to last too much longer if Munguia keeps landing those hard shots in the body and the head. So much power from Munguia. And it's been an emphasis of Eric Morales, the Hall of Famer, and Munguia's new trainer. It's just the second fight with him to, instead of worrying so much about strengthening his weaknesses, focusing on accessing the strengths, which is the aggression and power of Jaime Munguia. And I do see a difference now, the, the head movement, the waist movement, and he's been countering pretty nicely, Munguia has. And that combination in the first round, he actually used speed for that for that matter he didn't really concentrate on just digging on the body with three or four shots he used speed to get seven or eight shots in there beautiful body shot right there and again Munguia told to raise the punches a bit body sheet the sh body shots are going to be key here Munguia already landed two really solid body shots on Sullivan Munguia as the overhand right block by Sullivan. And then a right hand to the body from O'Sullivan, and then a left hook. Munguia again with that good head movement you were talking about, Sergio. And that's the difference I've, I've been seeing so far. Not only that he's mixing up the power with speed, Munguia is, keeping his distance, but the head movement is there. Big left hand to the body there from Munguia. You always feel the power of Munguia, 154, but now a little more at 160. Again to the body. Touch him upstairs just to get that elbow up and duck down to the liver. It didn't land cleanly, but you're going to expect to see that shot a whole lot more on Munguia's part. Combination there from O'Sullivan with the left to the body and the right up top. And then another's come. Bo hitting the body of Munguia. Munguia got caught pulling back, which is a big no-no in boxing. Don't get lazy. 
Fight three minutes of every round. Do not pull back with your head high. Keep that head movement like he's been doing. Steve Collins, one of Ireland's best, in the building and in the corner of Spike O'Sullivan. Give me the water, give me the water. Okay. You hurt him. You know you can hurt him. I told you you hurt him. So when he's in there throwing his shots, you let the hands go. Don't get too close to smudge From here, not there. Come on, bomb. On the right hook. It's a walking on, Spike. Okay. Right, the left hooks to the body was holding too. Okay. And here's that shot that landed, that body shot. It was that right hook. That body shot landed earlier, but that right shot right there by Sullivan. Right hook caught the attention of Jaime Mugia pulling back. Send your corner, Sullivan. Start of the third round, Jaime Mugia's debut at middleweight facing Spike O'Sullivan. Nice right hand right there by O'Sullivan. Caught Munguia right on the chin. We know Munguia could take a punch, but that was a solid shot O'Sullivan landed. Sullivan trying to get back at the body with applause from his corner coming as he did. And Sullivan's corner wants him to get in the inside. That's good advice. Get on the inside of the bigger Munguia and bang away at the body. Munguia, hard body shots there with the right-left combo. And again, right back to it, Sergio. I want to see him get back on the jab as well. Control the distance, control the pace of the fight, the action of the fight. Munguia again with the body shot that time with the left hook as O'Sullivan responds. And again, Munguia trying to get at the body of O'Sullivan. Changes in close from these fighters. Both taking some hard leather right here. Nice combination there from Munguia. And then the response from O'Sullivan. And this is the kind of fight we knew it could be. This is what we expected. O'Sullivan coming forward. Engaging in war now. Munguia responding. Both fighters willing to stand in and fire away. Munguia dipping out of the way. Sullivan doing a good job backing up Munguia with pressure. I like that stabbing jab by Munguia to the belly. Big left hook there for Munguia. Solid one, two, three right there. That right hand, if it would have landed a little bit more solid, that would have been some big damage for Munguia. Doubling up with the left that time. And a combination as he lands the left hand. Oh, O'Sullivan left himself exposed for a moment as he tried to signal that it was a rabbit punch from Munguia, and Munguia took advantage. And that's what happens. You got to protect yourself at all times. Do not look at the referee to save you. Big combination from Munguia at the end of this third round, and then oh. O'Sullivan. A strong response. O'Sullivan oh, rocked Munguia right there with the overhand right. Munguia's wobbled. Huge right hand from Spike O'Sullivan at the end of the third round. Don't, don't leave yourself open. Deep. And this is exactly what Munguia did not want to do. He didn't want to exchange and go to war with O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan is good, waiting for the counter. And that right hand right there landed right on the tip of the chin of Munguia. Munguia was rocked, walking back to the corner.
medio round, 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 And after Munguia rocked O'Sullivan at the end of round number one, it's Spike O'Sullivan who exchanged the favor at the end of the third round. O'Sullivan talked about how he felt there were big opportunities to be had against the leaky defense of Jaime Munguia. Nice body shot by O'Sullivan right there. He had 34 and 0, 27 knockouts for the 22-year-old fighter. Watch the heads. And according to CompuBox, Munguia has landed 58% of his power punches to O'Sullivan's 33. See, Munguia is going back to his old ways. He started moving his head, moving his waist, and, and fighting behind the jab with speed. Now he's just looking for power shots, and that's why he got clipped in between the shots in that last round, because everything is power. He needs to go back to the jab and concentrate on speed and distance. Good body shot by O'Sullivan right there. Let's check in with Claudia Trejos, who spoke with Jaime Munguia's corner. Thank you, Ryan. I had a chance to speak to Eric Morales, and he says that uh, Munguia got hit, but it didn't affect them much. Right now, they just want to make emphasis on defense and walk O'Sullivan down. I disagree with the great Eric Morales. He was shook. Munguia was shook walking back to the corner. His legs weren't under him, but he's responding well right here. Couple of nice body shots landed by Munguia. There you go, that's what I want to see by Munguia. Pop that jab. He's popped it a few times here. There you go, that's speed right there. Pop the jab, one, two, get the distance and the speed. Don't, don't put too much behind the combinations because O'Sullivan is very good punching in between the shots. That's what veterans do when they can't compete with speed and power and size. They time you in between shots. Sullivan backs away. Now gets Munguia up against the ropes. Munguia <laughs> using that jab more as you wanted, Sergio. Absolutely, but I would love to see Michael Sullivan continue putting the pressure. Fighters like Munguia, they're not accustomed to going backwards. We saw that in his fight with uh, Inoue, Takashi Inoue. Even though it was a one-sided fight, Inoue backed up the bigger man in Munguia. We, we won the round. We won the round. There's no necessity. It's not unnecessary to sit there and trade. All you're doing is trading. Jab him down below. Jab him to the body. There's no necessity. It's unnecessary to trade. Vamos bien, vamos bien, vamos bien, no te quedes parado nada más, no te quedes parado, ok, ponle la boca, ponle la boca. Jab, top, make sure, no gym range, if he's looking, control the right hand, faint. Alright, that's all you gotta do, a 10 punch round, let's go, let's go, let's go. Start of the fifth round between Jaime Munguia and Spike O'Sullivan. Eric Morales, the Hall of Famer, said about Munguia, his best defense is to attack. And although we're not going to attack irresponsibly, we're going to make him find a balance, defend himself with movements, with intelligence, and attack with greater rhythm. Eric Morales wants the attention of the referee. The mouthpiece fell out of Jaime Munguia's mouth. But Eric Morales better be careful stepping on the canvas while the fight's going on. And now, it is stopped so Jaime Munguia can get that mouthpiece. And the round continues. Oh, 
Has so been able to block that body attempt from Munguia. They want Spike Sullivan to back up the bigger Munguia. Munguia needs to stop loading up on every shot. He needs to do that right there. He needs to tap, tap, pop, pop. And the reason I like the jab to the to the to the belly area because it breaks the the, the pressure fighter coming forward in half. It's a, it's a simple thing, a jab to the belly or the chest, but it cuts your opponent in half, especially when he wants to come forward and pressure you. Spike Sullivan again looking to the referee, feeling like that shot was low from Munguia. That's the second time he's left himself exposed as he's gone to the referee complaining. The first time Munguia took advantage with a big shot. Nice body shot right there by Sullivan. Munguia didn't like that. This combination up top from O'Sullivan. There you go. That, I want to see that from Munguia. Chop O'Sullivan in half. He wants to come forward and back you up. Fine. Throw the right hands and jabs downstairs to the midsection. There Just like again. that. Yep. Right hand lands flush from Spike O'Sullivan. And he goes to the body of Munguia. So they're trying to punch through the midst of a Munguia as Munguia lands a right hand. Sullivan both missing wildly in that exchange. Well, Sullivan pushing back Munguia, which is what his corner wants him to do. Munguia fighting nicely off the ropes now. Nice combination landed up top from Munguia. Well, Sullivan looking to respond. And a good finish to the fifth round from Jaime Munguia. That's the way you finish the round if you're Munguia. He didn't load up. He flurried off the ropes with speed. I'm fucking crazy, right? When you're doing that, turn this way and let that shot go. So when he shows, Mike, fucking defense is fantastic. Are you feeling good in there? Right. Now we can see him slowing. Can you see him slowing? No. Listen, when you get your long range, get long range going, come on. You see a chopping right hand, O'Sullivan landed. He didn't get a chance to turn his fist to land cleanly, Second but still landed. And Munguia something, doing something I haven't Sullivan. seen him do, flurry with his back against the ropes with speed. And might have stolen that round with that flurry in the end. Start of the sixth round. Sergio, how do you have the fight so far? It's, it's a close fight. I, I, like the, I like the way both fighters are implementing their game plan. O'Sullivan backing up Munguia now. Landing some big shots. He caught the attention of Munguia, rocked him actually, but Munguia setting the, the tone and the pace nicely as well. <laughs> Counter there that landed. Sergio, anything noticeable to you seeing Munguia at 160 for the first time? No, it's the exact same Munguia. I haven't seen anything different. The first two rounds I've seen head movement, and I, I thought he was going to be able to do, carry that and do that throughout the fight. But he threw that out the window in the third round, and he went back to his old ways. Offense is his defense. Nice body shot by O'Sullivan right there. Three punch combination, and Gia responds. Again, that little stab at the body, which you've been beckoning on Gia to do. And it kind of straight loaded a little bit, but that's because O'Sullivan blocked it down a little bit, so. Keep going down there. Keep shooting that jab downstairs, and you can go upstairs. But make sure you bend your knees and make yourself small. That way, Sullivan can't come over the top with something. Sullivan again asking for that rabbit punch acknowledgement. Sullivan needs to stop complaining and just getting it back. And that shot was low, and Sullivan's going to need a minute. 
Got time to race. I know, I know. That punch really hurt the Sullivan. Time. Right in front of him saying that really, he needs some time to recover and the referee marked Callaway is giving him all the time he wants. Time. He saw that low blow. Oh yeah, that was low right there. Yeah. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. And a point has been One deducted point, from Jaime Munguia for that low blow. I think uh, a warning would have been better suited there, even though some some punches were strained down there. But one more warning, I think, would have been would have been just. Ready to go? I think O'Sullivan did the right thing that a veteran does and sell that low blow, and it, and it cost. Time man, let's box. And it's so in a close fight that obviously is significant. Oh yeah, that's gonna be. Hopefully, I won't come back and hunt Mugia, but uh, another warning would have been good. And push him down. Sixth round of a scheduled 12. But we hear Gary O'Sullivan's corner yelling before he deducted that point that he's hitting low. So they did a good job selling it to the ref as well that Munguia was straining low with those body shots. Nice combo there from Munguia. So right there, oh, Munguia's yeah, loading up too much. He's going back to his old ways. Go to speed if you're Munguia because O'Sullivan is is really good at countering in between the shots. So if you're loading up on the punches, you're gonna make yourself susceptible to power shots. And we saw that with the counter left hook from O'Sullivan. There's that jab downstairs. I wanna see more of that by Mungia. Don't focus on power right now, focus on speed. Stay off the ropes. Win these quiet rounds, because O'Sullivan's doing really good coming forward and then some good body shots. There's another body shot and then an uppercut from O'Sullivan. Don't stand, don't stand. Don't stand there until he can hit you. Just hit him, hit him in the stomach, and then open it up for an uppercut. You know, he catches you every time because you're walking back with your hands down. You don't keep your guard up. That's why he's hitting you. Okay. He has to be careful now, throw low shots. He has to. It's weirdy. Okay, so hit you low again. Start of the seventh round. Jaime Mungia in his second fight with the Hall of Famer Eric Morales as his trainer. Spike O'Sullivan trying to avenge what he thought should have been a victory for the Irish Dennis Hogan two fights ago, in which Munguia controversially scraped away with the win. Nice counter there that landed. Yeah, Sullivan told us that he's seen chinks in the armor of Munguia, and now we know that he wasn't, he wasn't kidding because he saw something in that Dennis Hogan fight. Here missing with that left hand again. Spike O'Sullivan complaining. But he had times it right. He can take advantage when Spike is doing his complaint. See the copy box numbers with Munguia landing 37% of his punches compared to O'Sullivan's 24 through six rounds. And has almost doubled the amount of landed punches. Jab right there by Munguia. There you go. That's how, that's how you beat a tough guy. That is a tough jab from Munguia. 
And it woke the crowd up. See, with, with guys like O'Sullivan, you don't want to exchange with them. They would love to exchange with them. And down you. goes O'Sullivan to a knee after a vicious hook to the body. And he's claiming it's a low blow. I would love to see that in slow motion again. The referee looked at us and said that it was a low blow. You ready? Take your time. You good? Well, if the referee didn't take a point away in the last fight, he would have taken a point away there. And that would have been valid. So either way, Jaime Mugia needs to be careful not to stray low anymore. And it broke a little momentum that Mugia had, although he's getting it back here with some hard combos up top. Mugia winging away. Michael Sullivan is the type of fighter that, in these middle rounds, he looks to punch in between the shots. So Munguia, it'll serve him right to box behind the jab. He's already winning this round. He had a good combination, but you don't want to give Sullivan a chance to uh, crack you in between the shots, because he did that already. He already shook up Munguia, just like that. He just missed with the right hand. Nice combination, so Sullivan goes soaring backwards into the ropes, and Munguia tees off. And O'Sullivan, a response at the end with his own combination. Even when hurt, O'Sullivan is dangerous. You can see it right there. Down, 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 down. You're getting hurt in there. Right, I want you to get out of this shield. I'm not going to pull you out there, OK? I want you to get out of this shield. If you're in there fighting and they're trying to destroy you, I'll stop the fight, OK? I'm not going to stop the fight in the corner. Fuck off, boy. We're in there, start throwing you. There we see the low blow. Hey, this is yours. He's gonna come out strong next round. Come in there and fight with him. If you guys stop, you guys stop and fight with him. Don't lie back and let him fucking hit you. Okay, here we're gonna see the low blow, and it landed. It's straight low, right under the W in war right there. And here we're gonna see at the end of the round, after he caught a breather, but it seemed to benefit Mungia a little bit more because Mungia came on with an onslaught of speed and combinations right there. Hold hurting on, O'Sullivan, backing him up. Box. Start of the eighth round. Between Jaime Munguia and Spike O'Sullivan. A few nice flurries in that seventh round from Munguia that were started with some powerful jabs. Push him down, Sullivan. A little bit of speed has been taken away from the, the punches of Spike O'Sullivan. Looks a little bit more tired here. Mungia a little bit more fresher with his combinations and speed. Even though Sullivan's coming forward wanting to initiate the, the pressure and, and the aggression, you better be careful with Mungia's counters right now. All right, let's get a little more on that low blow from Claudia Trejos. Thank you, Ryan. I had a chance to speak with the commission, and they explained that that was an unintentional low blow. It was part of the motion, and therefore, a cautionary call is enough. All right, Claudia, thank you very much. So an unintentional low blow, not a knockdown, not another point taken from Munguia, who's already lost one for a low blow. Nice body shot there, followed it up with a hook, and then a double left from O'Sullivan. Spike O'Sullivan's corner asking him to dig down deep. As Munguia comes with a jab, it's been effective whenever he's used it tonight. It's been effective, but now we're, we're seeing a, a, a more weary O'Sullivan. He's looking like he's a little bit more tired. 
Fatigue is sending in on Sullivan, and that's how those jabs have been landing in that crisp counter right hand right there. What's the move for Morgia after the jab? After the jab, just stay on the jab. Let O'Sullivan, who's in his uh, mid-30s, he's 35 years old. The legs aren't under him as they were earlier in the fight. Let him make the mistake coming forward. So pop that jab. Let O'Sullivan walk into a big shot. There's the jab there from Morgia. That's what I want to see. Jab upstairs into the midsection. Let O'Sullivan make the mistake, because right now, O'Sullivan looks fatigued to me. And again with that jab. I would love to see up more uppercuts from Mungia right now, because since Spike O'Sullivan is a little bit tired right now, when he gets in the inside, he'll be vulnerable to uppercuts, O'Sullivan will. And you can see it in the legs of Spike O'Sullivan. He is absolutely fatigued here in round number eight. That's what I don't want to see is Mungia loading up on shots like that. Time! Bernard Hopkins, Oscar De La Hoya, watching one of Golden Boy's prized young guns in Jaime Mungia. 34-0. As he fights at 160 pounds for the very first time. Breathe, take deep breaths, beat him with a jab. You're doing a great job. You're doing a good job, just keep jabbing. In that corner, in that minute break, we see the great Eric Morales and Jaime Munguia's corner telling him, relax, fight behind the jab. It lands every time you throw it. Just flick it out there. Good body shot by Munguia right there. Nice combination. Watch your head. Get out on the other side. Get it close, boy. Get it close. Hold the landing, boy. Come on. Take it out this, boy. Got it again. Do it there. Do it there. This is your time. You got to do it. Back this, boy. Come on. Sergio, is this a little deeper into the fight? Then you thought Spike O'Sullivan would go with Munguia. You know, I didn't know what to really expect with O'Sullivan because he, he has been through a lot of wars, but he is tough. He's 35 years old, but he had a lot of time to train for this fight. He said there was no excuses in his camp. He was prepared for this moment. I just didn't know what type of fighter we were going to get out of O'Sullivan. But he's holding his own and he's backing up the bigger Munguia. But Munguia's catching him with some good shots right here. O'Sullivan is just looking to catch Munguia in between the shots right now. Big left hand landed there for Munguia. Just like he tried right there, O'Sullivan. And then that jab, that jab is halting O'Sullivan every time. And that time it sets up the right hand. And it sets up the right hand because he jabbed twice. And O'Sullivan losing his legs a bit. As Munguia lands a left hook after tapping the body. Munguia not forgetting the body. That jab has been so effective for Jaime Munguia. He has an opportunity here in round number nine as O'Sullivan starting to lose his legs. Can Munguia take advantage? The great Eric Morales told Munguia in the corner, go back to the jab. That shotgun jab is doing damage to O'Sullivan. I mean, you could see it is jarring him back every time Munguia throws it. And it's opened up some other opportunities as well. Big left hand there for Munguia. If I were Munguia here, I'll just stick to the jab. Power jab, speed jabs to the gut upstairs. Don't exchange with O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan's just waiting to exchange. See if Munguia goes back to the jab. He's gone away from it these last few combinations after it had been remarkably effective. 
in what looked like it could be some finishing moments. There you go, back to the back to the belly with that jab. Nice hook there from Magia. Stop, 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 stop. Go push him down. There you go. Let's go. Let's box. Magia better not get lazy. And that's the outer round number nine. You got to keep working so you have more speed on your shots. He already, he's out. He wants to go home already. And here we see the jabs, the power jabs that are causing the head of O'Sullivan to flick back like that. But that's all it takes. That's all Eric Morales wants out of Munguia. The power jab, and that's what's going to set up that straight right hand right there. Shotgun jabs right to the nose and face of Spike O'Sullivan. Let's go, Blue. Let's go, Blue. Hustle up. Start round number 10 of a scheduled 12. See if Munguia gets consistent with that jab. Go back to the jab, and once again, I love the instructions that Eric Morales told him in the corner. Forget about power, concentrate on speed. I love hearing those instructions, especially from two tough Mexicans, you know, that, that love to engage. Concentrate on speed, fight behind the jab. Go back to the fundamentals. So another strong jab before that left hook from Munguia. There you go, touching him. Munguia touching him, backing up O'Sullivan. Go back to the jab, stick that stick out there. So reminded to watch that body punch is. He lands a big over there right. Munguia needs to stay energetic. He needs to be aware at all times. This is one thing about Munguia. I said in the last round, he needs, he does, he, he's getting a little lazy or lethargic in there. Sergio, you know people watching, they see the effectiveness of the jab of Munguia as we saw the last two rounds and they wonder, well, why doesn't he just stick with it? Because it's so, O'Sullivan oh, doesn't have the best defense. Neither does Munguia. But when you're landing so cleanly, you want the power shots. Right there you see O'Sullivan trying to punch him between the shots of Munguia. That's his game plan. He's going to try to catch Munguia in between the shots. And he took a big blow as he tried to catch Munguia. When it's so easy to hit your opponent, of course you're gonna keep swinging for the fences, but sometimes that's what your opponent wants you to do. He wants you to swing away because he's trying to time you and catch you in between. Magia may be trying for home runs when the singles were quite effective. Big right hand to the body. Good combination there for Magia. Studying body shots by Munguia right there. Even, even though O'Sullivan blocked those shots, they were still effective. Audible power in the fists of Jaime Munguia. Watch the back of the head, Spike. Watch the back of the head. There you go. See that? Right there, Munguia touching him now with speed. I just want him to keep his chin tucked in now. There you go, touching him, touching him, keeping him at the distance. That'll do it for round number 10. Yeah, okay, but two more. Are you? you want to finish in that feet? Are you sure? Yeah. Two rounds, that's it. I can take this, I can take them, tell you. Well, you don't mind. But tell you what, when you're trolling, you're hurt. Okay? Gotta get experience. Oh, six points. Oh, six points. They're getting the service. That's what you're doing. This is the 
Is it hard? Are you hard? No. Yeah. What? I'm okay. You're going for two more? Yeah. You're definitely. What do you care? I don't mind. I got it. Right, you do me a favor with your fucking, with your stand there, you show and bang your chest. I'm out there for you. Good. All right, Doc, that's good. Second time, let's go. Second time, let's go. You could tell a long conversation there with Spike O'Sullivan and Packy Collins' his trainer as to whether or not he wants to continue. Start of the 11th round, and Packy Collins telling Spike O'Sullivan, hey, pound your chest if you want out. It's okay, there's only two rounds left. Spike O'Sullivan going to continue, at least for the moment. It was pretty close through the first five or six rounds, but Sergio it does feel like Munguia has taken command in these later rounds. Yes, he has. Behind the jab. And it's a power jab. It's been effective. It's a shotgun jab. He just needs to not get lazy and, and keep that chin down. In the last two rounds, Munguia has been keeping that head a little bit too high, and O'Sullivan can wing away a shot and catch him pulling back. Munguia, the chance of his last name here in a very friendly San Antonio, Texas. See, right here, both fighters are tired. Just touching your opponent will be effective. Touch, 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 and bang away. Just like that. You know, fighting tired, it's a skill in itself. You know, it, it took me a long time to realize how to fight tired before you just want to hold or, or move and jab. But touching your opponent in the inside, even when it looks like you're not hurting your opponent, as long as you're turning your hips and your shoulders and your waist, they're heavier punches than you think. Nice combination from Munguia. As O'Sullivan losing his legs a bit there. Munguia still going with speed in this combination. As O'Sullivan against the ropes. Not much resistance here from Spike O'Sullivan who finally grabs Jaime Munguia. Speed is gonna stop O'Sullivan here. It's not gonna be power, it's gonna be speed. Munguia better just concentrate and focus on speed. There it is, Sergio. And there goes the white towel. It's in the ring, and that is it. Jaime Munguia wins his middleweight debut with an 11 round stoppage of Spike O'Sullivan. The former champion in Munguia winning in the championship round. Spike O'Sullivan not happy with his corner throwing in the towel. And I don't blame him because he was taking punishment there, but he had the wits to hold on to Munguia. If he could have lasted that round, it would have only been one more round. He could have held his head high. Instead, Spike O'Sullivan stopped for the third time of his career. And Aimee Munguia improves to 35-0 with his 28th knockout and a successful debut at middleweight. And again, stopped on his feet. The only one to ever put <laughs> Spike O'Sullivan down for the count was David Lemieux, a devastating puncher. I know you asked why you to but what you guts on Spike O'Sullivan? Because you know what? Uh, you haven't done that big shot on you. And you can hear Packy Collins trying to explain to Spike O'Sullivan why he threw in the white towel. Mark, can you get that for And Spike O'Sullivan at the end was not showing much resistance. Munguia did use the speed, as you talked about, Sergio, and that was indeed what finished off Spike O'Sullivan. The second half of the fight, I've seen a big improvement in Jaime Munguia. I've seen the, the, the difference that Eric Morales has made in that second half of the fight. Eric Morales told him, go behind the jab, focus on speed, and that's exactly what got the stoppage here. It wasn't brute force, it wasn't, it wasn't relentless power, it wasn't Mexican style, it was speed, and it was a jab. And finally that speed,
finished off Spike O'Sullivan as he hit the canvas and the towel actually arrived before Spike did. And I, this was the toss. I could understand why Becky Collins threw the towel and they knew that Spike O'Sullivan was going to have the heart to want to last, but he didn't have the legs. He had the heart, didn't have the legs. Sometimes your corner needs to save you from yourself. Absolutely. Let's head up to Joe Martinez with the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes, 17 seconds of round number 11, the blue corner of O'Sullivan retires. Therefore, we declare your winner by TKO, and now the WBO Intercontinental Middleweight Champion. He is still undefeated, Jaime 